My name is Sarah Jane Simrod and I'm Director of Membership at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science. The Perot Museum of Nature and Science has actually been open since 1936 when it was known as the Dallas Museum of Natural History. I'm pleased to report we've had more than 3.8 million visitors since we opened in our new location in 2012 in the heart of downtown Dallas and we have about 28,000 member households. In addition, our annual budget is about $23 million. The Pro Museum of Nature and Science is a very large organization, and we had a burning question. Should we restructure our membership benefits? And if so, how? Maybe this isn't your burning question, but the point is that sometimes even small decisions can have very big price tags. Printing brochures is expensive, uh, customer upset is expensive, and we wanted to make the right decision and look at data as we decided what we should do moving forward. So before I tell you how we made our decision, I'm gonna show you what we did in advance. So first of all, we looked at pricing and we realized that we were priced optimally. We took a look at our guest and film passes and we eliminated or reduced those greatly. We kept in place free and limited admission and we kept in place all of our great discounts at the museum shop and the cafe. Step one, market research. What is everybody else doing locally and nationally? So we took a look at what everybody else was doing and we found out that we were priced optimally. The green bars in this graph represent local museums and attractions. The blue bars represent national level museums and attractions. And there we are right in the middle, priced perfectly with room to grow in the future. So we left our pricing flat. Next, we took a look at our membership benefits in four critical areas, traveling exhibitions, theater passes, guest passes, and member-only hours. One of our member benefits is member-only hours. Members get to come to the museum early on Saturday and Sunday before the museum is open to the public. This graph shows member-only hour visits during the time frame from when we opened the museum through March of 2015. As you can see, the member-only hours are, are gradually declining in usage. However, even in 2015, we noticed that up to 6,500 members were coming in certain months for member-only hours, indicating a successful and valued benefit. Traveling exhibitions are special exhibitions that are open on loan to the museum for a limited time. Our members get a benefit of reduced admission costs to these exhibitions and also get to attend member preview days before the public gets to attend. We wanted to know how many of our members were using this benefit. We looked at all of our current members and we also looked at our renewing members. A majority of our current members at 58% were using this benefit. Our renewing members were at 63% of them were using this benefit. So again, well over a majority of our renewing members and a majority of our current members were using our traveling exhibition benefits and we knew that this benefit was valued and successful. Next, we looked at theater pass usage among our members. This graph represents the number of theater passes issued in the blue bar and the number of theater passes redeemed in the red bar. Overall, only 22% of our members were using the theater pass benefit. Theater passes are a liability on our books and they're also expensive to maintain and keep track of. This is one benefit that we were going to look at closer. And finally, we looked at guest pass usage among our members. This graph is similar to the last graph in that the blue bar represents the number of guest passes that were issued to our members and the red bar represents the number of guest passes that were redeemed by our members. In this case, only 14% of guest passes had been redeemed. This is even lower than our theater rate redemption. So we've looked at the data. Step three is a survey. What do our members value? What benefits do our members not even know that they have? Or maybe what benefits are too much trouble to redeem? We wanted to know and so we asked them. So here are our survey results. The blue line represents the percent of respondents who are aware of the benefit. The gray bars represent the percent of respondents who value the benefit in their top five of all benefits. We knew from this graph that we could not eliminate guest passes because they have high awareness and high value, even though we don't see strong redemption in the numbers. We knew from this graph that we could probably eliminate film passes because they have lower awareness, lower value, 
and low redemption rates. Step four, restructuring decisions. So we looked at our data, we surveyed our members, what's next? So to review, we eliminated or reduced our guest and film passes. Step two, we reinvented our member-only programming so that members knew they could come to the museum and have content that was just for them. Step three, we repositioned existing benefits. For example, our relationship with the Association of Science and Technology Centers, reciprocal admission program. Step four, we had to engage other stakeholders within the museum before we could cross this finish line. We met with finance, we met with guest services, we met with marketing to understand the impact of our decisions on the bottom line and how complicated they might be to execute. The new benefit structure went live on May 12th of 2015. We had a customer service plan ready to go in case current or renewing members took issue. New members weren't gonna know the difference after all. The results? Well, we are in lockstep locally and nationally with what other museums provide. We have reduced cost, particularly with the film passes, virtually no complaints whatsoever, and we consider our big decision a wild success. Serendipitously and simultaneously, we went live with Tessitura at the same time. Two-year memberships were always available by phone or by mail, but with our new system improvements, we were able to offer these online as well. An examination one year later has revealed that our decision was a good one, and ongoing monitoring of data and member usage is important in maintaining this decision. And here are our results one year later. Our renewal rate among our renewing members is literally unchanged from last year. We had less than 10 complaints out of our 12,000 renewing members. Our guest pass redemption has increased by 5%. And we have a $35,000 net positive impact annually on our bottom line every year due to our decrease in theater passes. So back to our burning question at the beginning of this presentation. Should we restructure our membership benefits? Yes, but use lots of data. Thank you so much. I'm Sarah Jane Simrod with the Pro Museum of Nature and Science. And I'm Sarah McLean with the Pro Museum of Nature and Science. Thank you.